When arriving at the test centre, look out for any designated parking that may be available for test applicants. If there's none provided, find a good spot to park in to ensure an easy start when pulling off. I'd recommend you arrive at the test centre about 10 to 15 minutes before the test. With you, you should have your driver's licence, your letter of application and in some cases know your car's registration number. Now, Mr. Gavin Walsh here, please. When the tester calls you, you'll be brought into an office. Firstly, he'll ask to see your driving license, which must be in date, and he'll ask you to sign your name, after which the theory part of the test takes place. This is where you'll be asked some of the common questions, followed by the road signs. That's good. Now, can I get you to sign after me, please, Gavin? Yeah. That's great. Okay. Now, I'd like to ask you a few questions now. Um, what's the procedure with a box junction, Gavin? Okay, the rules for box, rules junction, for box junction. Not let stop it unless you're turning right, provided you're not causing obstruction. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, what's the rules applying to a clearway? Clearway, um, no stopping or parking in the times indicated except for buses and taxis. That's right. And um, what would you do if you were dazzled by headlights? If dazzled by headlights, you should slow down, stop if you have to, and look them down and left to the verge of the road. That's fine. When can you not overtake them? Can't overtake on a continuous white line, a bend, a brow of a hill, and basically anywhere where your vision's obstructed. That's good. And when do you use your dipped headlights? Um, you should dip your headlights um, always if you're in a well-lit area, dusk or dawn, snow or fog, when you're behind a vehicle, or when there's any oncoming cars. That's fine, Gavin. <coughs> now, just a couple of road signs I'd like to ask you now. Yeah. This sign here, Gavin, can you explain what that sign means? Okay, that's a, a sign for a pedestrianised street. Yeah, and this one here? And a sign for a clearway. Very good. Now, Gavin, can you explain this sign here for me? Um, that's a staggered junction of less importance in front. Very good. And this one here? And that's a um, series of dangerous bends ahead. Very good. <coughs> okay. And just one other here one. This one here, Gavin? Um, that's a level crossing um, unguarded by gates. Yeah. And this one here? And a dangerous slippery road ahead. Very good. Okay, Gavin. That's fine. Now we'll proceed out to the car and uh, we'll do the checks in the car then. Okay. With that part of the test out of the way, show the tester towards your car, where he'll check that your insurance disc is in date, your tax disc is in date, and for cars over four years old, your NCT is displayed and in date. With all this in order, he'll proceed with the vehicle checks. That's great. Now where does the brake fluid go, Gavin? The brake fluid's here. That's good. And the coolant? Coolant is here. Radiator water, yeah. Yeah. Window washer water, Gavin? It's here. And the oil? Well, the oil goes in here in yeah, the dipstick the for checking the check. That's good. Now how would you check the levels of the brake fluid, Gavin? Um, just to the side there's the minimum and maximum level. That's so good. It's filled up to the yeah. maximum. And on the coolant? Um, same again, just here on the side there's a maximum level just here. That's good. That's fine, Gavin. Okay. We'll close the bonnet down now and we'll do the... Just check your brake lights for me. Okay. We'll also do the indicator. Next, the tester will check that the car is roadworthy by checking the brake lights and indicators are all working. Put the brake lights on for me. Off. That's fine. Give me the right indicator, Gavin. Give me the left indicator. That's great. Leave the left indicator on for me. Give me this indicator again. And now give me this one. That's fine, Gavin. That's great. When the tester sits into the car, he's going to ask you about your vehicle controls. We're going to just do some uh, car checks now for me. Uh, I'd like you to, how would you demiss the front window for me, please? Yeah, just turn this to here with the fan. That's good. How would you demiss the back window? Yeah, just this button here. That's right. The hazard warning lights, how would you put those on? Yeah, just push this button here. That's right. How would you wash the front windscreen? Uh, if I just push, pull this towards me. That's right, yeah, yeah, that's good. And how would you put on the um, dip lights for me, please? Uh, just down here if we turn that twice. That's right. And how would you put your main beam on? If I turn on the dip lights and then just pull, pull, pull this forward. That's correct. That's yeah. fine, Gavin. Thank you very much. Okay. 
OK, Gavin, now I want you to drive as you normally drive. Turn right or left only as I direct you. In other words, keep going straight unless I tell you to turn. Okay. And in your own interest, we'll have no talking. But anything you don't understand, just ask me and I'll repeat it for you. Okay. Okay, so when the tester asks you to move off, take a deep breath. There's no rush. Move off by indicating right. Check your right mirror, look over your right shoulder and move off. Once again, checking your right mirror. Now at the T-junction, I would like you to turn right. Mirror, signal, check my right mirror, maneuver just left of the centre of the road, and as I approach the T-junction, I'm going to roll into first gear. This will give me plenty of time to be sure there's no cars coming from either side. When safe, move off, making sure you don't cut the corner. When the turn is complete, have a glance in your mirror to see what's going on behind you. Now at the T-junction, I would like you to turn left. As I approach this turn, I quickly become aware that my vision is obstructed by the amount of parked cars. So once again, rolling back into first gear. This gives me more time to look both ways before entering the new road. With cars on both sides of the road, it's important to, whenever possible, keep a door length from the parked cars. Now at the T-junction, I would like you to turn left again. Approaching this T-junction, because I can see early on that it's a main road I'm approaching and I know cars are probably travelling a bit faster, I'm going to roll into first gear here again. So already in the first couple of minutes I've shown good progress on the straight, whilst taking care on all turns. The tester straight away knows he has a competent driver on his hands. After entering the main road, I see that the speed limit is now 60 kilometers, and a bus lane is forming in front of me. I need to gradually get to the speed limit, check my mirrors, moving out from the bus lane. Driving along this straight, I'm going to keep an eye on my rear view and left side mirror. Basically, I want to show the tester that I'm aware of any buses or taxis that may be coming up on the left lane. Gavin, at the next junction I would like you to turn right. With all the cars queued up in the left lane, I must maintain my position in the right lane approaching the junction. Once again, I find myself having to slightly go over the middle line in order to approach the junction in the correct position. When stopped at the red light, I'm going to lift up the handbrake and put the car into neutral. Proceed into the junction, and with no oncoming cars, I can make my turn, once again checking my mirror after entering the new road. When driving along straight, I'm just keeping good progress and a good position to the left of the road, whilst keeping a regular check on my mirrors. When approaching ramps, don't be afraid to alter your road position slightly in order to make the drive more comfortable. Only do this where possible. Now I'd like you to take the next turning to the left for me. Mirror, signal, check my left mirror, keep into the left and take the turn without swinging wide. I want you to pull in anywhere you like where it's safe and convenient. Pulling in, Check my mirror, signal, and pull in making sure not to obstruct any entrances. Now in your own time I'd like you to do a turnabout for me, and you can go back and forward as many times as necessary. For the turnabout, first of all follow the procedure for moving off. When safe, move off steering quickly whilst driving slowly, and just before finishing try straightening the wheel up. Stop the car, look everywhere, 
reverse looking behind you, and when you get close to the curb, once again try straightening the wheel. Look everywhere once again and drive off. I'd like to take the next left turn. As with any new road, observe the road as a whole, always being aware of cars entering and exiting junctions and any potential hazards that could be around you. I'd like you to take the next left turn again. After my left turn here, I immediately observe parked cars in front, so stay out to ensure I keep a door length from the parked vehicles where possible. With a large amount of vehicles on this road, I must be very conscious of any potential hazards that may arise. While keeping good progress, keep to a safe speed and keep watching as far in front as you can. I would like to take the next right turn at the T-junction. Straight away I notice there's a stop sign at this junction. Simply come to a complete stop. Take the next left turn. Halfway through this left turn, by looking into the turn, I see a pedestrian walking across the road. Approach with stream caution, showing the tester that you're ready to react to whatever the pedestrian may do. After this hazard, continue on with good progress. Now at the T-junction, I'd like you to turn left. Approaching this T-junction, I see a lot of cars parked, making it very tight. Check your mirrors as you're approaching and just take it slow. Entering a busy road, take extreme care and avoid driving into bus lanes. With the lights green, I'm waiting in first gear to proceed. When the junction is clear, move in and make the turn when safe, whilst also glancing into the turn for any obstructions which may lie ahead. On all roads, be aware of and avoid driving in the cycle tracks. I'd like to take the next turning to the right. Approaching the junction, I'm going to have a look left and right. Turning right for me, please. Next turning to the right. Mirror, signal, check my side mirror and maneuver into position. When clear, look into the junction and turn without cutting the corner. After turning right, I can quickly see that the roads are very narrow. There are a lot of obstructions around and there are a lot of bends in the road. I should show caution here, but these are also situations where people lose marks on progress, so be sure not to drive too slowly. Take the next turning to the right again. Through all these roads, maintain a good road position, which means keeping the car relatively straight and avoid weaving in and out between obstructions. 
take the next turning to the right. T junction turning right. Approaching this T junction, once again I can see a busy road, so I'll roll into first gear and I already know I'll most likely have to stop. I want you to take the second exit off the roundabout to straight through. When taking the second exit, I approach in the left lane. When safe, move onto the roundabout, keeping my position to the left, and exit indicating left while checking into my left and then in my right mirror to make sure there are no cars coming in from the right lane. But I'd like you to pull in just past the next junction on the left for your reverse, please. Avoid indicating too early, or it may be perceived that you want to take a left turn, and you can lose marks for a misleading signal. Now I'd like you to reverse back around that corner for me, and don't stop till I tell you. Okay. Before reversing, look everywhere. What's important here is reverse around the corner, keeping relatively close to the curb, while keeping a good eye on what's around you. I always advise stopping halfway in order to observe everything around you. This also allows you to get your bearings. Failing to stop for oncoming cars can result in failing the test. That'll do me fine there, thank you. I would like you to demonstrate your hand signals to me now please. Give me a hand signal for turning right to water traffic. Turning left to water traffic. Slowing down or stopping. To water traffic. That's good. Now left to the pointsman for me and straight on to the pointsman. That's fine. Now when you're ready you can move off and turn left. After the reverse, because you are parked, make sure you signal right to move off and check your blind spot. Move off and then signal left. Now I'd like you to take the second exit off the next roundabout, which is right. Approaching mini roundabouts, remember they follow the same rules as normal roundabouts, which simply means yielding to traffic coming from the right. I'd now like you to take the next turning to the right. Slow down in good time for ramps, showing the tester that you're reacting in good time and that you don't have to brake too hard on approach. I'd like to take the next left turn. And take the next right turning. Even in these estate roads, I'm always pushing towards the 45 km mark, whilst obviously slowing down for any hazards that may be approaching. With parked cars approaching, move out gradually, and with no oncoming cars, maintain your position. Now at the roundabout, I would like to take the first exit off the roundabout, which is left. With this roundabout, once again not entirely happy with my view of the road, I'm going to roll into first gear. Keep reading the road well in advance, and where two cars are blocking two-way traffic, react in good time. Uh, 
take the second exit, which is straight through. straight through. Again, approaching the mini roundabout, look right and glance left before proceeding through the roundabout. Now at the T-junction, I'd like you to turn right. Approaching the T-junction, moving into position and ensuring I come to a complete stop at the stop sign. For these ramps, because I can see they're not too high, while slowing down slightly, I'm still keeping the car in third gear. Keep observing the whole road, anticipating hazards and reacting to them as they arise. This should always be done as uneventfully as possible. Basically, if you have anticipated in good time, you should never have to brake too heavily. At the traffic lights, I'd like you to turn right. At the red light, once again pull up the handbrake and go into neutral. When ready to proceed, be sure to glance in both directions, even though the junction is guarded with traffic lights. People often lose marks in this situation by presuming the traffic lights means they don't have to look. Approaching the brow of a hill, or any situation where your view is obstructed, just make sure the tester is aware that you're approaching with caution. This is generally done by dropping a gear from fourth to third. Reacting this way really shows to the tester that you're reading the road well. After moving into the right lane, I see I have a full green and a filter light, showing me I have full right of way. Once again, while approaching the junction, have a scan of the junction before entering. Now at the next junction, turning left for me please. When turning left where there's a cycle track, it's extremely important to keep a good eye on your left mirror before you cut through the cycle track, watching for any cyclists. Now at the next junction I want you to turn right for me please, next turning to the right. As with all right turns, before making the turn, make sure you look into the junction. This is essential in order to show good observation and anticipation of any obstructions on the new road. On this road I'm keeping left where possible, whilst reacting in good time to all obstructions ahead. The less steering the better. So make all your movements gradual. Approaching the roundabout going straight, once again look right and glance left. No indicators are required going straight on a mini roundabout. Now at the T-junction I want you to turn right for me. Now Gavin, I would like you to pull in on the left anywhere that's safe and convenient for me, please. Okay. 
Okay, Gavin, if you'd like to follow me back into the test centre, please, and I'll give you the results of the test.